Over the weekend, we built our very own Bollinger Bands Reversal Indicator. This is a free indicator available for everyone to download. You can download it on our website, tosindicators.com slash indicator slash Bollinger hyphen bands hyphen reversal. Once you're there, click this big green button and you can download the indicator and import into your platform. As part of this reversals indicator, there's two things we're looking for. One, this price action cross above the Bollinger upper band or below the lower band. So that's step number one, using the Bollinger bands telling us we're looking for a reversion to the mean. And step number two, if we do get the cross above the upper band or below the lower band, do we have price suggesting that, hey, we're now looking for a reversal back to the mean? For price to suggest that, we need the close to be above the previous candle's high, suggesting we now are making a move towards the mean, and for our short side opportunities, a close below the candle's low. Fairly straightforward, in case you're curious to learn more, be sure to watch this tutorial and you can learn a little bit more around the code that powers this indicator. Now when we built this, we applied it mostly to a chart of the S&P 500, major equities, underlying things of that nature. However, after playing around with it, I found it's equally useful on a chart of the VIX. For much of 2022, the VIX chopped around between that 20 and 30 price point. Anytime the VIX crossed above 30, that was a good sign in 2022 that, hey, there was too much fear in the market. This was a good time to be a buyer of assets, so a buyer of, say, the S&P 500. Anytime the VIX crossed below that 20 price point, it was the opposite. Too little fear in the market, a good time to either hedge or sell any existing long side positions you may have. Now, when we use the Bollinger Band reversals indicator applied on a chart of the VIX, we can see a lot of signals, bullish and bearish, and a lot of signals take place in this zone in between where I find it's not really all that useful. Same idea down here, we don't really care about short side signals when the VIX is already telling us that, hey, we're below 20, we're now looking for the VIX to come back up above that 30 price point. So let's go ahead and write some simple code or another filter rather in our Bollinger Bands reversal indicator to try and get rid of all these false signals so we can see how useful is the Bollinger Bands reversal indicator on a chart of the VIX to try and time moments when to buy and sell the S&P. For our bull signal, I'll add in one additional filter, which says only show me these buy arrows whenever the VIX is below 20. So I'll say low is less than or equal to 20. Same idea for our bear signal. Our high needs to be equal or greater than or equal to 30. If I click apply, that gets rid of a lot of the noise for us. Now let's layer in a chart of the S&P as well. I'll put that in the lower panel here and we can try and see how useful this indicator was. Now let's go through each one of these moments side by side. I have the VIX and the SPY loaded on. We'll go through this with uh, clicks where we're looking at any time we see sell side arrows above 30, we're looking to see does the SPY rally. And any time we have a bullish arrow on the VIX, we're looking to see does the SPY sell off. I've aligned the crosshair, so hopefully this makes it a little easy to see on our chart. So this right here was our first bear signal right here. That's Jan 24th, the SPY rallies. Keep coming forward, we come inside of February, VIX again, telling us too much fear, SPY one more time has a nice little pump. Now we have the first signal right down here where the VIX is telling us that, hey, we have too little fear inside of the markets. We're in fact looking at either hedging or closing out any long side positions. Take a look to see what happens inside of the S&P from that point. We have a flush down lower. One more time, the VIX telling you too much fear inside of the market too early on the S&P 500, one more time, still too early, one more time, this time we do see the SPY rallies just a little bit. It's not a perfect uh, indicator by any measure. I wanted to prove that with these three signals right here. Now keep coming forward. Our next set of bull signals inside of the VIX suggesting too much fear and we're looking for the SPY to sell off takes place in the August time period. One more time, we see the S&P has its next flush move down lower, and this is that August flush move that we were able to catch with the bearish trade. Now we come forward, we can see the VIX one more time above 30 with all of the signals taking place between September all through October. And after that, we get the final rally that took us into the year end inside of the S&P 500. 
So hopefully this demonstrates how this very simple indicator when applied on a chart of the VIX used to trade a chart of the SPY is still a useful way, a useful gauge to try and understand when there's too much fear in the market where we're looking for a reversal and when there's too little fear in the market where you're either looking at hedging your existing long side positions or maybe even taking them off altogether. The VIX combined with the SPY is a useful tool as is, but when you layer on the Bollinger Bands reversal indicator, I think that makes it really clean, nice and easy with specific triggers where you're looking at these reversals to start to take place and for price to again revert back to the mean. I hope you found this video useful. Again, if you'd like to play around with this on your own uh, charts, you can try different time frames, different markets as well. Maybe you don't care about the SPY, but maybe you're more of a Q's trader. Whatever it is, you can compare them side by side and download the indicator for free from our website here, tosindicators.com slash indicator slash Bollinger hyphen bands hyphen reversal. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.